Hello, Brandon. My name is Kiana. Um, today I'm here with Brandon Yang, who is the executive director of the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Um, if you want to give a little introduction of yourself, please feel free to. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I'm Brandon. Um, and uh, my pronouns are he, him, and his. And uh, I've been with, uh, so I work for Out on Screen, which produces the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Uh, and I've been with the organization since 2015, but I'm a, uh, I'm a COVID executive director. So I basically became the executive director in 2020. And so this is my, my third festival as the executive director, but um, our, my first one, which actually I get to do things in person. So that's exciting. Yay, yeah. <clears throat> I was actually going to speak a little bit about um, Out on Screens just before getting into the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed someone the other day who was also a part of Out, out in Schools, Out um, on Screens. Um, I was, I saw that you, yeah, became the executive director in 2020. Um, if you want to talk about a little bit about your work um, mm -hmm. with them and how you got started with that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, uh, I, my first instance of working with, I guess, out on screen was in 20, 2009, I be, became a volunteer at the, the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Uh, but then in 2015, I joined the organization as the out in schools program coordinator. So uh, out on screen, our, our mission is to illuminate, celebrate and advance queer lives through film education and dialogue. And we do that through the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. And we also do it through our out in schools program. And so out in schools, is a, an education program that travels across BC and we show film. Uh, we show 2S LGBTQI film in classrooms and schools and libraries and wherever folks wanna watch them. And we have really great discussions around gender and sexuality. And, um, and that's also you know um, where I got my start as a program coordinator uh, and then eventually worked my way through the organization and became the executive director uh, a couple of years ago. Right. That's amazing. That's so cool. Um, yeah, I was pretty unfamiliar with um, out on screens. Um, and I definitely am someone who advocates um, for modes of activism throughout art. And mm -hmm. in, in that it's I guess it's more specifically film, I, I focus more on the music side, but I'm starting to, to learn more about um, the ways film has a place within um, activism and and awareness. Um, did you have a like film? How did you get started with like the, were you <laughs> curious about film and then you like started volunteering, I'm sure. And then, yeah, if you wanna talk about that or, or even the ways film um, has, has a place in activism. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think art in general is key to activism. I think it's, um, you know, without art, um, you know, this world would be a very dark and sad place. I think a lot of us turn to art during the pandemic to, to console us, to lift us up, to to take us through that, that those range of emotions, to connect with people when we couldn't connect with people. So, you know, I think art has a, a central focus in everyone's lives, whether you know it or not, whether it's you read, whether it's you listen to music, you turn on the radio, whether, uh, you play video games, like all of that is art and all of it um, is not, uh, you know, none of it is unbiased. Like we all have, as people who create things, we have our own points of view and our causes. And so nothing is neutral, if that makes sense. Um, there's always an underlying agenda per se. Uh, and for us, obviously to, to, to showcase, you know, to us LGBTQI plus art and film, is central to what we do and you know for me how i came to this was you know, volunteering in 2009 was not necessarily because i wanted to watch a lot of film was because i was a young queer person kind of new to vancouver uh, i grew up in the suburbs in langley went to school uh, at ubc and but i lived in burnaby and so i didn't really know a lot of folks and so i think finding those places like the queer film festival um was really important uh, for a lot of folks. I know a lot of newcomers to Vancouver um, will come to the festival to meet people because it's it's not always, it's not a party focused event. Like there's lots of mingling and, you know, meeting people in line while you're waiting for the film. You know, we have post-film Q&As. Those kinds of things really interest a lot of folks that um, might not find parties the best way to meet people. So 
Uh, we do have parties though, but um, you know, there's that. Uh, but I think for for us, why film is key is I think in many ways, film creates the pathway to to build empathy. I think it's, you know, I as a queer person of color, I don't have everyone's experiences in the back of my head. It's I learn by watching TV or film or other art through theater or whatnot. And I learn about uh, other communities' experiences, uh, other people's experiences. And I think that's kind of key to what we do. Yeah, um, definitely use the word empathy. And I think that's the the biggest thing um, with, with film that you can't really help yourself. You're talking about um, how the, all the art people engage with is obviously unbiased. Um, I mean, is biased <laughs> mm -hmm. um, to a to an extent. So engaging um, in things that are different, especially in a place like Vancouver. I was going to ask um, if you grew up here. I guess Langley, Langley, Vancouver, <laughs> sort of sort of similar. But I I understand maybe Vancouver has a little bit more to it um, happening. Um, if you want to talk about your experiences in Langley, <laughs> you don't need to, if you don't want to, I get that. Um, but yeah, I, I am sometimes kind of pessimistic about Vancouver. Um, not so much now that I'm, that I'm finding out about more art related things um, where queer people are running the shows and, mm -hmm. and have agency over like how they get to see themselves. Um, but yeah. I think um, what could, I don't know if necessarily you sort of answered this, but Vancouver Queer Film Festival, um, what do you think like its place in Vancouver is? Yeah, I mean, I think um, all festivals and arts events play an important part in the kind of ecology of artists in the city. And I, you know, we are, I, I, I'm with you sometimes where I feel pessimistic sometimes about this very expensive, beautiful place that we call home. Um, you know, especially trying to support artists who don't get paid very lot, very much for for the work that they do, and you know, for the amount of art that we all consume, not all of it goes directly into the pockets of artists. And so, um, doing our part to make sure that we do, you know, pay artists equitably and, and for their work is really important. Um, but I would say for the Queer Film Festival, it's interesting because it's, you know, right now uh, as we do this interview, people are gearing up for you know, the big Pride weekend, there's a million events happening, there's fireworks happening, there's all kinds of stuff happening. And ours, our event happens on August 11th, and it goes to the 21st. And so it's 10 days um, of films, parties, workshops, those kinds of things. Um, and for a lot of people, like I said earlier, um, the, the film festival is in many ways their pride. They don't partake in a lot of the big events that are happening this weekend. They come every year for the last couple decades to the film festival to, you know, to see their friends, to talk with community, to engage in, you know, new art. Um, so for a lot of folks, the, the film festival is their pride. Um, and so I think that's, that's part of the role that we play is providing that space for people to gather. Um, and yeah, I think it's also an important platform um, for a lot of today's issues, I think, facing our communities. Um, as we see a lot more emphasis on, you know, ensuring that uh, cutie BIPOC voices are front and center, um, local artists are front and center. I think that's part of the the movement um, that we're a part of. Yeah, I agree. Um, in another interview I did, we talked about out in screens and just um, complexities that um, show up in the LGBTQ plus community and um, mm -hmm. the ways um, sometimes one dimensional takes are kind of imposed on different issues. And like you were saying, focusing on um, not only like issues of activism, but using joy as a mode of activism as well mm -hmm. and making sure people see that side um, is really important. Um, sorry, this goes a little bit off of the off of topic, sure. but you, you brought up, um, so Vancouver Queer Film Festival has films to watch. It also has workshops and parties, you you said that briefly. I just wanted to ask a question about that. Um, if you could talk a little bit more about those things, because I think for me, I see film festival and I just one dimensionally <laughs> think film. 
Yeah, so um, obviously this year is still different than, you know, pre-2020 film festival. So, you know, 2020, 2021, we were almost 100% online. Uh, well, we were 100% online in, the, in 2020. And then uh, last year we had a few in-person events, very small ones. Uh, this year we're back into our local theaters across the city, um, but still not to the same extent that we would normally be pre-COVID. So what we have going on this year is it will be at least at one theater or venue per day. Um, we'll open the festival with our, our opening gala, um, which is the Empress of Vancouver, which is actually a local film, which is also a very a rare thing to happen. Uh, not all, not, it's not very common that we get a local film to open up our festival. And so following that, that film, we'll be moving uh, outdoors into uh, the plaza outside the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Um, for our party under the stars. And so for a couple hours, we'll be gathering. Um, we'll have, uh, you know, a DJ. We'll have um, my dear sister and drag performer, Made in China, um, who will be performing. Um, and they'll be, yeah, uh, it's, it's just a good night to gather with folks outside. Um, and then throughout the festival, um, there'll be uh, a lot of kind of like workshops and panels on the first weekend. Um, and then more films and Q and A's. And we'll also be throwing a, another party uh, at the Hollywood Theater um, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Coast of Queer. Uh, and that is happening on, as I look at my guide, August uh, 13th, or 18th rather on Thursday. Um, and, you know, as a film festival, we also try to prioritize access as well. So we don't charge extra money for galas or special presentations. It's one ticket price, generally speaking, throughout the festival. Um, tickets range from $5 to $21. It's kind of pay what you can. Um, and the only other weird thing about a film festival in British Columbia is that we are required to sell memberships or have memberships. Um, it's, uh, and those are $5 as well. But if there's anyone experiences financial barriers, just email us, uh, boxoffice at outonscreen.com, and we can uh, try to make something happen for you. Amazing. Thank you for giving that little rundown. Um, I know there's, there's so much happening and I just put you on the spot and said, give me every event right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, okay. So as an executive director, mm -hmm. do you have any like, I know I'm sure there's like film programmers as well. Um, but I'm not sure how familiar with like the films being played you are. I'm sure obviously you have some familiarity, but um, do you have any films or events that you are particularly excited about this year? That yeah. you get to see? Yeah. I mean, I've, I have been watching. Um, you're right that I don't have, you know, full insight to every single film. Um, but our programmers are excellent. They've done a really, really good job. Um, you know, like I said, I'm really excited for the opening film because I think uh, I've seen it. And I think what's really interesting about the opening film is that it's it brings generations together. So it's a, a documentary about Olive Howe, who's a local staple here in the West End of Vancouver. Um, and she was crowned the 10th Empress of Vancouver uh, back in 1981, which is also the first year of the, the Vancouver Pride Parade. So it takes you through that history. And I think it's really good for folks, you know, in our generation to, to learn about our history in, in the city that we call home. Um, there's other films throughout the festival. Um, there's a great film from Nigeria called Country Love. Um, and not only is the film really beautifully done, but there's also subtext to a lot of queer film as well. So what I mean by that is, you know, for a film to be about queer subjects, filmed and set in Nigeria, there, there is a struggle that you don't always get to see about how that film gets made because it's, it's very illegal to be queer in Nigeria. And so uh, the filmmaker had to go through a lot of, um, yeah, uh, undue hardship to get that film made. Um, and there's a lot of interviews for, with the director trying to talk about like the, the complications it is trying to make a queer film in, you know, an anti-queer country, um, you know, um, and still produce a beautifully shot film. Uh, there's that. I think what uh, is really exciting too is uh, a film I haven't seen yet, but I'm excited to see is called Sirens, which is uh, merges your interests of music and activism um, about an all all female group in I believe um, Lebanon. I think yes, right. I know my things, uh, and that's actually happening in person and online. Um, that's on Tuesday, August 16th at uh, Cinematheque. 
um, downtown Vancouver, but you can also catch it um, on video and demand throughout the festival as well if you can't make that night. Um, but it's also just really special to see movies in person as well, um, to be surrounded by your community and to, to kind of feel the same, you know, that sense of communal um, witnessing, I guess, is really important. Um, what else am I excited about? Um, Coastal Queer Program, our shorts from local filmmakers is amazing. Um, uh, Emergence Out of the Shadows, also a local documentary film, um, which is about uh, the South, A South Asian community here in Surrey and Vancouver uh, and confronting homophobia, internalized homophobia in community and uh, relationship with parents as immigrant communities, um, as people of color. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely film. And that will have be happening live as well with a QA and a um, following that screening. Um, yeah, there's lots going on. Yeah, so much going on. Thank you for giving all that insight. Um, you mentioned Sirens, which not mm -hmm. to be an annoying promoter, but um, <laughs> CJSF is, is um, I think, a community partner for that film. So we're giving away tickets to that. Um, yeah. So, and yeah, it's, I saw it's digital and, and in person, which is super helpful. Of course, seeing it in person, like you said, being surrounded by the energy is super um, amazing, but also yeah. and people wanting to be in the comfort of their own room and doing that as well, if that's an option. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm excited for Sirens because as you said, it does, it does mix um, um, music and I'm really, I'm excited for that one. Um, yeah, okay. I was going to ask you about the I Love My Human Rights series. I, I know that's sort of off of topic of Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you have anything to say about that that you want to share, but um, obviously I know all things intersect and connect, so I thought I would ask. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's um, that's not our our project. So I I, I was in a video um, in that series called "I Love My Human Rights," um, which was actually started by the the newly um, developed BC Human Rights Commissioner's Office, and so they started a series um, called "I Love My Human Rights." And there have been a number of videos. Um, uh, Teresa Pocock was in one of them around disability. I know, I think Danny Ramadan was in one video about his experience um, as a refugee coming to Canada, as a queer refugee coming to Canada. Um, and uh, my, my video was um, about, yeah, about culture and being mixed race and queer um, and finding, yeah, finding your place, I guess, and understanding who you are and, and where you come from and where you're gonna go. And, um, you know, part of that is just navigating that familial history and uh, uh, talking with my elders about our family history and you know where we've come from because it was something I was never really interested in growing up. Um, like again, I grew up in Langley. And my dad jokes that we were probably the first Chinese family on the block to ever exist in our neighborhood, and I don't think he was far off. Um, and so, learning about my Chinese heritage was not front and center. Um, and again. A lot of it comes down to the media that we consumed on TV. There was never any, never any Chinese people in sitcoms, never any queer Chinese people uh, in sitcoms or, or television or movies that I watched. Um, so it was very difficult to understand, like you know, where you belong um, if you can't see that the, those possibilities in your future. So um, that's the the part I think that media plays uh, a part into my my whole narrative of not only working for out on screen but also uh, in our conversation with the Human Rights Commission as well. Yeah, and just back to complexity, I think um, film festivals are a great place to, because obviously there's never, there's never going to be one film that, like you said, um, encapsulates someone's entire identity and also someone, um, people within a certain demographic's entire identity ever. There needs to be <laughs> so many films made to capture different, different aspects of identity. Um, and intersections like that. So I think the Vancouver Queer Film Festival is the, the place to be for that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Trying. Yeah, 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 for sure. Was, um, can I ask, okay, so Out on Screens is, is a partner with Vancouver Queer Film Festival or is that this year or is that, has that always been? 
Yeah, so it's complicated. So this is the the, the bureaucracy behind a charity. So um, so out on screen is actually the entity that does everything. So when you donate to the Vancouver Queer Film Festival, you're actually donating to Out on Screen. So I work for Out on Screen. Um, everyone who works for the Queer Film Festival works for Out on Screen. So Out on Screen is the actual like the the head company that runs everything, and it's a registered charity nonprofit. And the QFF, the Vancouver Queer Film Festival, is a program. So it's complicated for lots of different reasons um, because that's just sometimes how charities work. Um, and then our, so Vancouver Queer Festival is one program and then the Out in Schools program is the other program. So think of Out on Screen as the, the society that runs everything and the Queer Film Festival is the programming that we do. Um, and same with the Out in Schools program. So um, Out and On Screen has been there since day one, um, but most people know it as the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Right. Okay. 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 I see. Yeah. I was. There <laughs> is mud, right? Like it's not. Yeah. Uh, it's not easy to understand, but it's yeah. also like, it's just our general branding problem. Mm -hmm. um, but the usually way we do it is like we're out on screen. We produce the Vancouver Queer Film Festival and the Out in Schools program. So yeah. Yeah. So many. So many different things. Um. But yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to figure that out. I knew. I was like, maybe it's an umbrella and it falls under this so kind of yeah cool. like there's right. there's other organizations uh in vancouver that have the same issue so for instance the the queer arts festival is actually run by uh pride and art society so it's like two different names for the same thing essentially right okay amazing thank you for explaining that um <laughs> um okay i'm super excited for um, the Vancouver Queer Film Festival. Um, thank you for mentioning the other things that are happening. You said the the party with the DJ and then where Made in China is performing is the opening night? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, after the film, uh, I believe it, uh, the party officially starts at uh, 9 p.m. on August 11th um, in Halakshin Plaza, which is the plaza outside the Queen Elizabeth Theater. Okay, okay, cool. Amazing. So excited for that. Um, I I want to see Made in China live. <laughs> they are amazing. I I um, know. So someone that I interviewed, David from Love Intersections. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I interviewed him and we talked about um, the documentary that is going that was going on Yellow Peril Queer um, Destinies and Queer Futures. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I had no idea about that, but I have seen Made in China perform and they're top tier, amazing. Um, so that will be really exciting. Um, yeah. she's, she's legitimately my sister. So yeah. it's, uh -huh. it's... <laughs> Wait, like, like me being- Yeah, like, like, like we're like we're family. Wait, oh my God, were you in the- I was in the film, yeah. Okay, what? <laughs> whoa, whoa, so much is connecting. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I, I watched um I watched Queer Destinies and then oh my god, okay, yeah, it's like coming back. Um okay, yeah. Well, I saw you guys having a conversation just about um I think I think it was with your dad and like just yep. yeah. <laughs> okay, wow, that's great. Yeah, that's me and old man Yan and and, oh my god. and Kendall. Wow, wow. So everything is connecting and oh my goodness. Okay, well that's so amazing. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah. I was like, you said family, and I was like, I don't know. Queer family, like it's it, like. Yeah, I was like, well, chosen like chosen family. <laughs> but okay, cool. Um, okay, well, I'm very excited. Thank you for taking the time um, to speak about this and answer all of my questions. Um, I think that's all of it. If you have any last final words you would like to say about anything at all. <laughs> uh, I mean. Check us out at queerfilmfestival.ca. Um, like I said, um, uh, we try to keep our ticketing quite accessible. If you have uh, any financial barriers, please just let us know. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good time. Highly recommend folks to maybe try something that doesn't interest you immediately. Try something outside your comfort zone. Go see a film that you know uh, is about a different identity than yours. I think it's always uh, you'll be surprised. I think. Uh, at the, the depth and breadth of humanity and queer film. So um, excited for folks to check it out. And also our theaters are air conditioned. So um, it'll be a good time to cool down in, uh, in mid August, so. 
Yes. Okay. That is happening August 11th to August 21st. Get your tickets, everyone. Yeah. 